getting this podcast going today, you guys. Uh, today marks the uh, anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall. I don't know if you guys know that, but if you're in Las Vegas, downtown Las Vegas, you can actually see the Berlin Wall at the uh, Main Street Station Casino. I don't know if you knew that. It's in the men's and uh, ladies' bathroom. They've got one end urinals, and I'll, I'll throw up a picture. I don't know. But yeah, if you want to go see the Berlin Wall, you most definitely can do that. But anyway, my name's Jason James. Uh, Life in Las Vegas, baby, is the uh, website.com website. Or you can go to our YouTube channel, which uh, is pretty cool. We do a lot of stuff with our YouTube and stuff like that. So welcome to the channel. And uh, we're going to cover some things. There's a lot of things in the news that's uh, going on. We have, you know, this recent project that's been uh, announced a couple of days ago. Blue Tech, Blue Tech Park. Uh, off, it's going to be on the south end. If you know where South Point Casino is, it's going to be uh, on the corner of Cactus and the Las Vegas Boulevard. They have a huge plot of land, 210 acres. They're going to put this mini city tech city in. It's really fancy, high tech. I'll throw up a picture here so you can see it. But let me know what your thoughts are on this because I'm really curious on whether or not these uh, guys are coming in to actually do this project. And you know, it seems a little far-fetched, but they're going to have like a wave pool. Like you can actually surf there. So I suspect a lot of techies from uh, California are going to come here. They're going to have a lot of stuff going on. You know, it's going to be like a solar solar city slash uh, Internet of Things. Everything's interconnected uh, with high-tech this. So, yeah, it's going to be really interesting to even see it get off the ground. I'd like to just see shovels in the ground just to see if they bought the land or not. They say they secured the land, but I don't know. Sometimes these projects come in, they, they announce these projects and they never get done. They, don't even get, they never even start them. But this one, they were in the news. They seem to know what they're talking about. They have investors. They have some investors, some people that have deep pockets, you know. Just this mic a little bit more so you guys can hear what's going on. But Blue Tech Park is uh, probably after the first of the year they'll be doing something with that. Again, it's going to be, uh, you know, South Point Casino. Cactus is the street, cross street to the boulevard. So keep a look on. I, I do have an article. I'll leave a link below on my website about that. So yeah, let me know what your thoughts on Blue Tech. Uh, do we need it in Vegas? Is it what's it going to do to the home prices in that area over there, the Southwest? Um, you know, will it jack up home prices here? I think it will. I think it's going to have some pretty interesting um, economic effects here. Speaking of economic effects, uh, this one just passed. Uh, let me know what you think of this one. So. Yeah, the mayor has passed a uh, no camping out on the streets of Las Vegas here. So just in a few days of that passing of that ordinance uh, or law that uh, I have seen less homeless people out running around on the streets or walking around, milling about, things of that nature. Um, I don't even know where they go. I'm trying to, uh, I'll probably do a little uh, drive down the north side of uh, Fremont Street just to see where they're all, where they're all at or where they go. Because I don't think we have the facilities for that amount, amount of people. But just the other week, uh, Las Vegas has, you know, uh, it's been announced that we have the most homeless most growing homeless population here. Trying to get that all up, out in one sentence, but hey. It's morning. I'm drinking my first cup of coffee. Oh, man. You understand. I hope. But yeah. Um, so the homeless. You'll see less homeless on the boulevard for sure in the Las Vegas Strip. Fremont Street? I don't know. They might... Be still hanging out there. I still want to go around and do... Maybe I'll do a live stream about that on YouTube. I don't know. Let me know what you think. 
Should I investigate some of that stuff for you guys? I'm a little curious myself what's going on with that. But yeah, they have the, yeah, the homeless are, so here's the deal. The homeless, if, you know, they can't pay the, the fine for that. It's $1,000, okay? So if you're caught and the police want to do something about it, they can either take you to jail and process you and all that stuff, and you go to a probably a court system and they fine you $1,000 or six months in jail. Now, you're, first of all, you're homeless. You don't have anywhere to go, so the option would probably go to jail so you can have shelter, and then you have food and all this stuff. So it's really falling off onto the backs of the taxpayers here. So who's paying that $1,000 fine? Because that person's not going to pay it. How's that work? Hmm. Nobody's really discussed that. Or do we build more jail systems here? Do we build a, a bigger uh, place to put people? <clears throat> because obviously they're coming here. Utah dumps off their uh, homeless here. I don't know if you need that. But they'll, get, they'll round them up in a bus and then they'll ship them here. Um, so yeah, interesting stuff. And people wonder why we have the largest homeless population, growing population. So that's kind of a sad situation. I don't wish upon anybody to be homeless or anything like that. It doesn't really... Uh, although I do have friends that camp out in California. that they, they don't have an apartment. They just live in a tent or some sort of pop-up shelter. But they're adventurers, you know. They work. They just choose not to have an apartment or they like to stay mobile. You know, that kind of thing. But teach his own, right? I guess if you have sustainability, you do that kind of stuff. But you get the idea. So that was in the news. You know, the camp out law or things like that. You know, it's it's a touchy little subject, but we have to do something about our population. And then, you know, six months later, who knows what will pop up. Uh, what do we learn from this? What what are we getting? What are the numbers telling us about this new ordinance? So we have to look at that stuff, too, and figure out, okay, how do we tweak this? How do we adjust this to make it uh, a more humane situation for our homeless population? So, And by the way, nobody should be homeless. I mean, with the amount of money that America has in our government and all this stuff, you know, there really shouldn't be homeless. There should be... Um, mental health facilities, medication, and stuff like that for people. It, it's a must, but that's just my opinion. But let me know what your thoughts are on this. Leave a comment below for sure. Touching on another subject here. Let's move on to some of the Las Vegas news. Okay, you guys, I know Blue Tech is like an exciting project for sure. Um, <clears throat> it has a lot of promise, but let's talk about Virgin Hotels coming to Las Vegas. Now, Virgin Atlantic, they bought the Hard Rock. The Hard Rock Hotel just sits off the strip near the airport. Of course, it's been, it's been, has taken a hit because it is off the strip. It, it, it's away from where all the action's at, obviously. But Virgin has decided to take a look at this and go, hey, we can do something with this. And what I like about their approach is they are, you know, really against the resort fee thing, the hidden fees and all this stuff. So this is going to set a precedence with a large corporation like, you know, Virgin Hotels coming into Las Vegas and saying, hey, you know, MGM and uh, Caesars and all these other large conglomerates there charging you know resort fees is horrible so what they're really saying is like hey poo poo on you guys uh no resort fees coming from us we're not going to even have that no hidden fees or nothing like that you get what you get here and that's their whole premise you know they have virgin airlines and all that stuff they wanted to give you the best deal possible uh for a you know a really good flight and so they want to carry that over to Virgin Hotels. I really think they're going to do some really 
awesome stuff there. And by the way, they're going to keep all the memorabilia, the rock and roll memorabilia in there. I guess they're going to keep that and make a special room. Now, right now, you can go in there into the hard rock, and they have, excuse me, pardon me, <clears throat> I just burped. And they have like a memorabilia thing going on. So they have like a room you can go in and look at all some of the memorabilia they collected, like clothing and what all these pop stars wear and, and instruments and all this uh, memorabilia from the past and stuff like that. You can go in a, a small room. It's free and it's cool. So if you're into that kind of stuff, you can videotape it and get a photo next to your favorite, you know, memorabilia. <clears throat> so that's cool. Pardon me, I cleared my throat. But I think, you know, Virgin, you know, they got plans to blow out the uh, the pool party area, which is cool. Um, yeah, they plan on doing bigger, better things there. So that's what's going on there. Restaurants, I don't know what's going and what's going to be saved there. Lucky Sevens um, Diner is a iconic place there. I've eaten there. It's okay. Um, of course, I had something simple. I didn't have like a main course or anything like that. Or nor did I have breakfast there. But I should probably do that just to give it, give it a flavor and see what's going on. But let me know what you guys think of Virgin Hotels coming here and uh, planting roots at the Hard Rock. Now, on the other flip side of that, Hard Rock itself, the corporation, they're looking to buy a property on the Strip. Some of you may or may not know that uh, MGM and Caesars, uh, they're looking to sell properties. And rumor has it that Hard Rock may look for a property. And one of those properties is the Cosmopolitan. Now, I don't know how uh, true that is or anything like that. I'm not making any um, presumptions here. But, yeah, Hard Rock Hotel is looking, the corporation is looking to buy a property on the Strip. So, you might see that big old guitar hanging out on the Strip at some point in the future. Which is cool. So, what do you guys think? Should, because they already have a Hard Rock uh, cafe down there. And, you know, they just want a hotel. I think they'll do it. Um, Cosmo actually is a prime a prime target for that. So you got that. Other news is Bellagio has sold, I'm sure everybody knows this one, Bellagio sold for $4.2 billion to the Blackstone Corporation just last week. And um, so Blackstone re, uh, is uh, leasing it back to MGM just for operational purposes and stuff like that. But that typically happens. And then you have Caesars. Caesars is uh, in a partnership, a merger with uh, El Dorado Ranch up in Reno. And so now they have stake on the Strip. And it's just basically the investors, they're just cashing out. Some of the investors just want their money, which is fine. Happens all the time. You're going to see some more wacky stuff here too. Speaking of wacky stuff, O.J. Simpson is suing the Cosmopolitan of, uh, of a report of a 2017, well, he got thrown out of the Cosmo, 2017, yeah, 2017, uh, reportedly being drunk and disruptive and unruly. Uh, the former football star denies uh, in the lawsuit Against the Cosmopolitan Las Vegas, that he was uh, belligerent, broken, br you know, breaking glass and damaging the property. Uh, the Cosmos declined comment on this case. Um, <clears throat> but O.J. Simpson's, you know, has his run-in with the law. He does live in Las Vegas. I don't know. Maybe I'm giving too much. Uh, information on OJ here, but that's kind of what's going on. You have, you know, Cosmo's now a stranger to, uh, you know, legal problems 
Meek Mill had a run-in with the Cosmo as well. They denied him entry into the Cosmo. I don't know what for or why, but uh, you might have done something wrong if they're trying to not have you come in there. I don't know. I'm just saying, man. But Madonna, check out, you know, Madonna comes to, into town. Let's talk about that for a second. Madonna, super megastar, musician. Everybody knows who she is. So she comes to the Cosmo, now scratch, Coliseum. The Coliseum at Caesars. And her first night, she was two hours late. And some of her fans are demanding a refund. So, you know, how would you feel if you had a con going to a concert and it's two, uh, two hours late for the person? I mean, she's pulling a... Um, you know, a Guns N' Roses move. Or who, you know, think of that. It's crazy. It's like, uh, yeah, I just paid $1,000 for a ticket. <clears throat> and, yeah, where is this musician at? This is great. Not too cool. So, yeah. What else is going on in the news? Well, let's talk about Let's go down to Fremont Street and check out some stuff. But the 4K um, canopy that goes over the top of Fremont Street, it's the world's largest digital canopy, by the way. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's pretty impressive. No doubt about it. Every time we go down to Fremont Street, we're just in, in awe. I don't ever get sick of this place, by the way, because there's so much changing going on. <clears throat> it's really interesting to see the amount of money that comes through here and... What they come up with next, as far as restaurants, clubs. I'll get to the club thing in a minute. And Fremont Street. So check this out. They've got the 4K canopy going in. They're, I think they're just about done with it. And they're going to do an unveiling on New Year's Eve, like a huge party for that. And also new entertainment. So Steve Aoki, the DJ, uh, lives in L.A., but he's from Las Vegas here. His parents are from Vegas, and um, they operate businesses here. And they're going to do a number with Steve Aoki. He did a, a mock one when they started the um, swap out with the 4K canopy thing, and he just packed the house. It was incredible. It was really good. But he's going to do New Year's Eve 2020, unveiling of the new digs down at Fremont Street. There's more coming. There's like a Chick-fil-A going in at the Golden Nugget, which is going to be awesome because it's really good food. Um, and also, they're going to haul down a 747 fuselage from Burning Man down here, and I think they're going to put it next to Container Park. How fitting would that be? Because do you have a space cleared out for that? My suspicions is it's going to be next to Container Park. I, I'm not saying for sure. I'm just saying that would be a perfect place for a fuselage because it is a long rectangular space that's cleared out right next door. And it's gated all around, so I'm sure that's maybe the place for it. I don't know. Or it could be down, down the street a little bit. But we'll see. Once it gets here, we'll figure it out. And I'll let you guys know. I'll get some video and all that stuff for you. But other than that, uh, Fremont is getting beautified. The east side of Fremont Street. They've uh, taken down the uh, center uh, neon fixtures. The spinny shoe is gone. The uh, showgirls and stuff like that. Everything in the center of that Fremont Street. As far as fixtures go, those have been rooted up and moved. They're going to move them somewhere else. So I'm, I'll let you guys know where they do that as well. So they got to... Get the streets in and also put the trees. They're planting trees up all along the uh, sidewalks and stuff like that. So more of a beautification thing going on. Even further, further down, they've got old motels and all these dilapidated buildings that they're fixing up. They're going to make apartments out of them. They're fixing the neon signs to the original uh, sign stuff. So they've already done some stuff over there already. But once that stuff gets, uh, you know, more developed, I'll do a video on that and let you guys know what's going on. And hopefully we've got people that can afford to live there. I don't know. Maybe the rent's going to go up. 
Nobody knows, but a lot is happening on Fremont Street. You know, I hear a lot of things about Fremont, especially the old 90s and 2000s and stuff like that. Uh, early 2000s. People just gave it, gave it a bad rap. Maybe so. Maybe it was just, you know, getting too crazy there and just nasty or something. I don't know. But they're really doing a good job on this um, remodel or renovation. I'll let you guys know. We did a Halloween thing down there. Uh, it was pretty cool. If you guys haven't seen our Halloween video, check that out. We did like a Macy's Day Parade kind of commentary for that. It was really fun, interesting. We'll do it again next year. That'll be fun. And if you guys want to join us on Halloween, let us know. We'll have you on our show and we'll do a live stream and we'll do all kinds of cool stuff down there. But check it out. A lot of fun. So Gordon Ramsay is going to open up another restaurant. It's called Lucky Cat. And it'll open up in September of 2020. So it must be a pretty big deal if it's out there, way out there a little bit. Uh, most of his properties are on Caesars uh, properties. So I'm, your, your guess is as good as mine of where this thing is going, where it's going to be at. But I'll let you know as soon as I hear. So just to let you know, there's... Um, you know, Hell's Kitchen that just opened up at Caesars. So you got that. New Year's Eve celebrations. Oh, let's talk about... I'll get to that in a minute. Club Chaos at um, Palms. Club Chaos, new club uh, at the Palms. Now, everybody's known I did a video on the Palms there. I'll leave a link below. The Palms is remodeled. It looks awesome in there. There's no doubt about it. They put a lot of money. The frittatas um, did a lot of renovation in the, the Palms. But the day club, the chaos day club, nightclub thing. And they had um, very expensive DJs and, and personalities and all that stuff that they hired. And, and they spent a lot of money trying to get people over there, rightfully so, because it's brand new. They remodel the things, and they just want to get people there. So they got, you know, a lot of, um, you know, Marshmallow, the DJ, Cardi B, all these uh, other DJs from around the world, uh, the super awesome hip-hop artists, you know, all good stuff, right? But then they closed the doors. They suddenly shut the doors. Now, earlier on, we've caught wind of uh, some of the uh, numbers that were coming in. It didn't look good. Someone um, posted on Twitter, like, oh, chaos is it's a great place, but they're not pulling in the numbers like they should be. So they spent a lot of money. There was a lot of, uh, of course, there's a lot of drama with the nightclub industry. If you ever were involved in that, you probably know. If you're a nightclubber, management, server, uh, anybody that works the door, it's all political BS, in my opinion. But if you like that kind of stuff, go for it. It's all here for you. But they shut the doors, just suddenly shut the doors. No 60-day notice, nothing like that. And everybody was let go from that. But um, at least 100, about 100 people were affected by this, I would say. That's what the press release says. But some of the employees are coming back at that, filing a class action lawsuit uh, against the club itself and to see if they can get some severance package of some sorts. Just to keep them afloat so they can find another job. If they can find another job. Because here's what happens. When a new club opens, other employees from other clubs on the strip will go quit their job at this club they've already got a job at. Go to another one. Things don't work out. They get fired. They're out of work. Can they get hired at the other uh, club that they worked at previously? Probably not. 
I mean, just the way things work here, they're probably going to be like, oh, so now you want to come back. Unless you are really tight with people and you've got all your ducks in a row and people really like you, yeah, you're you're good. But if if you've, uh, you know, just quit and kind of, they have to hire new staff and train people and all that stuff, yeah, chances are you're not going to get your job back. You'll have to look elsewhere. And most of these people will uh, get hired at a bar somewhere off the strip. That's typically how it works. And that's pretty much how it works in any city. But hey, if you're a good bartender uh, and you're good with people and stuff like that, there's plenty of work here for that. And there's plenty of jobs. So, And there will be more jobs because there's a lot coming here as far as like other projects and new things and stuff like that. So I don't think they have anything to worry about. I think they're just a year out from getting proper employment. Let me know what your comments are about this. Um, may not affect you. May You probably don't even care. But if you're a local, let me know what uh, you guys think. I'd like to hear. I do read the comments, by the way. Some good, some bad, some inappropriate. <laughs> um, and that's okay because everybody has a opinion and that's good so yeah uh so this is kind of like the first podcast i'm doing uh it's really not the format i was looking for but i'm just testing out some things and see how it works and hopefully you guys get some stuff out of this some value out of this um you know, some of the news that we want to cover on here is just, it's mostly just discussions. Some of these things are pretty interesting as far as like the Blue Tech Park going in down on uh, South Point on Cactus and the Boulevard. They've got 210 acres of that coming in. It is an amazing project. It is uh, valued at a 7.5 billion energy efficient mini city. Um, they had secured a parcel land on the south end of Las Vegas Boulevard. Now, the project was, is going to sit on 210 acres. And, uh, and they, they clout that this is going to be a renaissance of global di digital infrastructure and, uh, to southern Nevada. And so this thing is going to be 100% uh, off the grid and ultra luxury residential sp space. Uh, they claim sustainable living residential um, areas, uh, smart tech office and facilities, retail space, uh, futuristic uh, 3,000 room hotels. They're going to have a tower that's uh, 1,200 feet tall. It's uh, going to be a little bit taller than the stratosphere. So that's cool. If you can imagine that. They're going to have an exotic beach environment so I, I mentioned the wave pool so if you want to surf there they're gonna have a surf uh, a surf thing there a wave thing and uh, that's what I'm gonna try I want to do the surf thing that way I don't have to go drive all the way to Huntington Beach I can just go to this place and uh, do it there maybe I'll do a video on it that'd be funny uh, the city is uh, So they can have this self-healing concrete, energy generating breathing materials, and 33 super trees. I'm sure those are just solar powered capturing fake trees, whatever. Um, vertical gardens they're going to have. They'll have grass. They'll have all this cool stuff. And we, we will see. We will see what they put in and what they don't put in. Also, Virgin Atlantic is uh, Virgin Trains. There's a bond that was approved, a, a $3.25 billion uh, bond approved for the high-speed train going to Victorville, California to Las Vegas. And that's Virgin Trains, but the infrastructure has to get built. So if the infrastructure gets built, then Virgin Trains will set their trains on there, their high-speed rail trains, whatever those look like. Hopefully they're cool looking. 
So we got that going on. Some people don't even think that's going to even happen, but they do plan after uh, 2020 to start building the infrastructure for those uh, for the tr the track itself to uh, Las Vegas. And they say the train will dr do a drop off. I think they said somewhere near behind um, Luxor, near the Luxor, what, like the front of Luxor, but like a block over. There's an empty lot where they do American Ninja Warrior. There's a space there that might be the drop off point. Nobody knows yet for sure, but it seems pretty cool. They'll probably have to have two trains, like two tracks, like one going, one coming. Things like that. But that's kind of what's going on, you guys. I hope you all get something out of this here. It's just some small news things that are going on. And as things progress, I will definitely show you what's going on here as far as videos and things like that. But I wanted to get this out so you get an idea of what's coming, what's in the news, what can we chuckle at, what can we laugh at, and uh, what can we look forward to when coming here? You know, I don't know if you vacation here or you live here or whatever, but, um, you know, it's pretty interesting how things are evolving here. Very quickly, when you announce that you're getting sports into your city, like professional sports, now they're looking at soccer next, uh, an expansion team on the soccer end of things. So we have football. We have professional women's basketball. We have uh, hockey. They're doing very well. Uh, we have an ex uh, expansion. Well, we have a farm team for the A's. You know, we have our aviators for minor league baseball. They have a brand new stadium out in Summerlin, which is pretty cool. Don't know if you've been out there, but they also have a mall near there, too. So if you get sick of sports, you go right next door to the mall and shop around if you want to. So they have that. And Red Rock Casino is really close by. Pretty cool stuff, guys. But anyway, just want to let you know what's going on. I'm Jason James. Let me know what your comments are below. I'd like to hear what you have to say about these things that I've discussed with you here. And I'll see you guys in the next podcast and the next video. All right. Cheers, guys. Cheers.